Today I'm going to talk about multilingual structured climate research data and wiki data from the data perspective. This is joint work uh, with Christina Saraswa, who gave an, another part of this two-part talk. And that other part had essentially the same title, but it was from the community perspective. Uh, both are part of a workshop, Data Science and Climate and Climate Impact Research, taking place in August 2020. And in case uh, you did not have a chance to uh, listen to her talk, I will um, do a brief recap and then um, look at essentially the same infrastructure from the data perspective. So uh, the most important thing to remember from her talk is that Wikidata is the free knowledge base that anyone can use and edit, and lots of people do so. and uh, you're invited to do it as well. Um, an example that she gave was about Hurricane Katrina. And so here is um, an example of how this is modeled. Whereas in Wikipedia, you would have free text. In Wikidata, you have structured information, more or less. Think of it as forms. And the interesting thing is the same information can be represented in multiple languages. So if I just switch the URL parameter here, uh, to Chinese, for instance, then the information is displayed in Chinese. So um, then the data in Wikidata is available in multiple formats. So for instance, for the item uh, about the universe, uh, you can do, uh, if you use programmatic access, you can do content negotiation, you can choose any of those formats. If you browse to that URL um, by any browser, then the default um, content to be displayed is HTML. Uh, what is in Wikidata? Um, there are different things. And so here you see a whole lot of different classes of things, um, starting in red with the humans and then going counterclockwise. So there's humans in there, lots of them. Uh, there's taxa, that is species and other uh, groups of biological taxonomy. Uh, there's territorial entities like countries, counties, and uh, districts, and, and things like that. There's buildings, there's events, there's chemical compounds, there's culture, uh, there are astronomical objects, and so on. And the big blob here in green is uh, scholarly publications. So the items are linked uh, to additional information via properties to form sentences of the form item, property, and something else. And the um, properties that are available uh, for this, these purposes are about 8,000 8, at the moment uh, that are used these many times. Altogether, uh, Wikidata currently has on approaching 90 million items, that is concepts uh, that are annotated with some of those properties. Um, the supported data types for the something else, like item, property, something else, um, statements, uh, are um, well these ones that are listed here, and uh, the number of supported data types is continuously growing. So you can have media files, um, one item can link to another item, one item can link to another property. Uh, you, have, you can have strings in one or multiple languages, you can have identifiers and so on. Um, tabular data and uh, linguistic um, data as well. Um, how does this develop over time? So here we see uh, the de development between 86 and 88 million of items over the last few weeks uh, or months, actually three months. So um, a bit less than 1 million items are being added per month uh, at the moment. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes a bit less. And here uh, on the right hand side, you have forms of which we have about 5 million. That's different forms of words in uh, different languages. Uh, then what um, is the speed at which these things come in? So uh, here on the left, we have the most recently created items. These four are all uh, snapshots from uh, the same time point. So um, at some point last night, um, we had uh, a few new items being created. And typically, uh, the distance between creations of new items is measured in seconds to minutes. 
then lexemes, like things like words, uh, of which you see some here in Greek, for instance, they come in um, within minutes to hours. Properties are being created um, like at a distance of hours to days. And then we also have schemas, uh, which actually are a, one, another way uh, to describe things formally. And those come in um, at a distance of days to weeks. Um, the interaction between the users in the Wikidata e e e ecosystem and the content um, is mediated uh, via a range of tools. Those tools are either meant to be used uh, autonomously by uh, programs or by uh, humans or uh, in some combination. And um, this slide was also uh, in Christina's presentation, but what I've highlighted here are some of the tools in, in green. And the one that we will take a special look at is Scolia, which provides scholarly profiles. So what do the tools do? Uh, why do people use tools? So um, there are three main things that uh, people or um, like programs do with those tools. One is to edit information. So for instance, here, uh, if you have a DOI, you can throw that into the tool source metadata and then it will check whether um, it, that paper that corresponds to the DOI is already indexed in Wikidata. And um, if not, you can get it indexed and if uh, it's already there, you can check whether there's anything missing. Uh, checking is another uh, big uh, application area. So for instance, here you have a statement that uh, something has uh, some symptom, um, but there is a requirement uh, by the database that statements about symptoms should have at least one reference. And here this statement does not have a reference. Um, then other tools allow you to actually explore the, uh, the content. You have already seen uh, the page about Hurricane Katrina, and this looks much similar to the Wikipedia page, just a bit more formalized. But then there, uh, since this is structured information, it is uh, relatively easy to take that information and uh, represent it in a different fashion. And so there are a number of tools that allow you to do that. And here is one focused on digital preservation uh, for software. So um, here we have two of those front ends. The one that we just saw um, in the previous slide, it was about a search string. I was searching for Python. It gives me different options of what Python might mean. I click on the one for the software, and then it gives me uh, information about that software and also provides for some checks and balances as to whether that uh, particular software is annotated the way a software is expected to be annotated. Another um, front end to Wikidata is uh, Krotos, which focuses on works of art and um, basically does the same thing. It pulls information out of Wikidata, combines it uh, from different pieces uh, in, in the knowledge graph, and uh, then allows you users to interact with that. There's a whole list of Wikidata front ends, um, and the queries included. So, now I'm um, moving to the one that we actually want to showcase. So the tool here is called Scolia. What it does is allow us to profile certain things that are of interest to scholars. That is people like researchers, authors, um, it's institutions, topics, events, publication venues, individual um, papers or books, publishers, awards, and then more specific things like genes, proteins, clinical trials. It can also um, document the literature about Wikidata or about uh, Scoli itself. And um, in principle, there could be also um, climate science related things uh, that similar to the genes uh, profiles, uh, but those things don't exist yet. All of this is based on open data and open source, open collaboration and community creation, and it is work in progress. So um, most of those profiles are incomplete in some way, um, but um, anyone can help improve any of those profiles uh, that they have an interest in. So how does that look like? Well, you go to that URL, um, which I'll briefly demo, you type in something, and uh, then um, it, it's a normal search interface. 
I, ha I will launch this here quickly. And I have already prepared uh, a few showcase examples. So for instance, we can start by actually, yes, looking at the um, profile for the workshop that we have here. And uh, so that, that gives us a list of attendees, um, details what role they have in the workshop. Um, it gives us an information about who has already published with whom, um, with picture if available. Then there's a rough timeline. Um, it also gives us uh, some information about the topics that the people attending the workshop work on. Um, so climate change, for instance, um, comes out on top, which fits with the um, title of the workshop. Then we see most recent publications by participants of the workshop. And we can look at any of those uh, papers or any of those authors as well. And uh, then if the, there are any proceedings from the workshop, they would show up here. There are related events that we can compute in a different uh, fashion. Um, and so here, those that are based on time and location, uh, or we can just look at uh, things that are uh, similar by the people who attended. So for instance, we can take this, uh, this one um, where two of us have also attended. So um, on that, yeah, on that basis, um, I uh, can then go to, for instance, the profile of an individual researcher. So the keynote um, from yesterday, Marcus Reichstein. Uh, so we get a list of their publications, co-authors, and all of these are, uh, are clickable. So for instance, if I'm interested in the um, publications that he has published together with Jürgen Knauer, then I go on that shared profile. That gives me the list of publications that the two have authored, some timeline, um, citations, citation graph, these kind of things. And uh, the Profile for um, any individual uh, gives also a profile of the venues that they prefer to publish in. That could be a journal, could be some conference series. So here, Biogeosciences, for instance, pops up. So we can look at uh, that as a journal uh, profile. We can see who Marcus has uh, collaborated with in the past. That's just a selection of um, the most prominent people in his co-author network. You can see the topics he has worked on um, in different uh, ways. Then some of those topics will have images on Wikimedia Commons, so we can uh, pull those out. And uh, these are images of people he has collaborated with, topics he has uh, worked on, or institutions he was affiliated with, these kind of things. Um, then we can match the individual papers to um, their topics, and then uh, each of these again leads to the corresponding profile for that particular work. There's a timeline, so we, for instance, uh, we see that he received the prize this year. We don't know yet who <coughs> his uh, PhD supervisor was. There are some locations associated with him, uh, so place of birth and an employer. Citation statistics, citations by year, these are incomplete. <laughs> um, citing authors, events he has attended, these are just these two. Um, now we can, yeah, we already saw that, this one. <clears throat> there is this profile for biogeosciences. Um, so we get recent publications in the journal, we get topics that uh, the publications are about. You get authors in the journal uh, sorted by number of papers they've published there and filtered by whether an image is on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, here we have the most prolific authors again, um, including those for which Wikimedia Commons does not have an image. Here's the co-author graph amongst authors in the journal, the most cited articles, and then an example paper that cites those. Um, most cited authors, of course. 
the distribution of the citations, which basically means, yes, the impact factor is a useless measure to assess individual papers. Um, then, which journals are being cited from papers published in Biogeosciences? No surprise here, Biogeosciences comes out on top, but then there is lots of other journals as well. Um, and Biogeosciences is also cited from other journals for global change biology, for instance. Um, there are no articles in Biogeosciences yet that are known to have cited a retracted article. And this is the gender distribution of authors, and some of those authors have also received prizes. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the profile for our journal. And here's another uh, profile for the other event that he had attended. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, even though the event took place in 2018, um, the recent publications uh, are uh, up to date. So. Uh, that is an interesting feature that allows you to keep track of uh, what people were doing uh, since a particular event. Um, and yeah, so these were the first profiles that I have uh, prepared. Now, um, let's have a look at uh, Hurricane Katrina, for instance. How does that look like in Scolia? So um, first you see here the, the cruise are life. So the, uh, it might sometimes take a while for this to be computed. You get a bit of context. So this is an instance of a hurricane, uh, category five hurricane. It was in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, it's different from Cyclone Katerina and it's part of uh, the North Atlantic tropical cyclone cycle and so forth. Um, the, there are papers that have been published on the topic, so for instance uh, these ones here, um, they might have other topics as well, so this one is on the COVID pandemic as well. Uh, what we can learn uh, from past disasters about uh, current and future disasters, we see the timeline, yes it started in 2005 when the hurricane occurred and people are still publishing about it. Um, the Authors, there are several authors who have published multiple papers on this, or even at uh, institutions. Um, we can put them into an co author graph. Then, certain topics co occur with uh, Hurricane Katrina, no, no surprise here, it's Hurricane. Uh, it's New Orleans, Louisiana, yeah, where it had a particularly um, deep impact. It's evacuation, mental health, and a number of other topics. Uh, these topics can also be represented in terms of a graph. Some of those topics will have a geolocation tag in Wikidata, so uh, we can then um, plot them on a map. So, for instance, uh, it's not entirely clear what this one, yeah. So here is a paper that actually bundles together a number of things, the Indian Ocean Tsunami Hurricane Katrina, which is why uh, it is uh, geotagged here, far away from the actual tsunami, but then you have things like mortality associated with Hurricane Katrina in several US states. Um, you can score the authors, not just by the number of papers they published on a topic, but also by uh, the citations. Um, and then you can look at what are the um, journals that publish on the topic. You can look at most cited papers on the topic or most cited authors on the topic. Uh, you can look at organizations, institutions that publish on the topic. Not surprisingly, most of them, or those that publish most, are all on the US uh, and largely on the East Coast. Um, and then you can uh, look at uh, what's the citation graph, uh, and you can aggregate that by country. This is actually an interesting graph because it uh, requires uh, lots of things to be present in order to be um, visualizable. So we need to have the publications in Wikidata. The publications need to be tagged as to what they're about. So here, Hurricane Katrina. Then uh, they also have to be tagged as to who wrote them, uh, who were the authors of, of that publication. And those uh, authors then need to be tagged as to what their affiliation is and uh, those institutions need to be 
tagged with the country and the country then needs to have a flag and the flag needs to have an image and all of this is pulled out of Wikidata. Um, and if you're interested in how this works, uh, so uh, each query here in uh, Scolia is actually editable. So here you see the query that uh, renders this and uh, yeah, now it takes just a few milliseconds because I just ran the query before and sometimes it might take up to a minute. Then uh, some people who published on the topic have also received awards and uh, so yeah, that was the uh, profile. And importantly, much of what you see here is actually not contained on the uh, item about uh, Hurricane Katrina, which is uh, rather short. And for instance, this, this item, this page doesn't know anything about all these publications or the authors or, and so on. Uh, but since this is linked data, uh, somewhere in the knowledge graph, um, something is linking to Hurricane Katrina, just the same way it is linking to other concepts. So, and, and the last uh, few things I'd like to showcase are uh, individual works, pathways, and then options for curation. So here we have um, a profile of an individual paper. Um, that just gives uh, its topic scores, it gives a timeline, uh, works that are related, and uh, citations, uh, and cited works, then the authors that are associated with that, the citation graph. And uh, what I find especially interesting, these are statements inside Wikidata that are supported by this particular paper. So this species here um, is said to have uh, the taxon rank species, for instance, and has this taxon name so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, that is taken from the paper. Um, so in case anyone ever doubts whether that is actually uh, a true statement in whatever sense of proof, then they can go into the paper and check it. Uh, another profile that we have here is that of a uh, biological pathway. And I know this is far away from uh, kind of climate uh, research, but in climate science, uh, there are also um, chemical pathways, like the nitrogen cycle, or these kind of things. And uh, so they could probably be modeled in a very similar fashion. And so I would like to just give you a bit of inspiration. So here uh, we have a general overview of the pathway. Uh, and uh, this is actually uh, clickable. So uh, each of the things that are here in identified, they will uh, lead you to the profile for that particular chemical. Chem um, I should show that here. So this is a protein, uh, or this is a gene that encodes certain proteins, has certain transcripts, and so on. And here's what we know about this gene in different species, and, and, and so on. So uh, that is what you can learn from that graph. Uh, this particular gene here is from us, from the species. Then in that pathway, you have lots of chemical compounds and, and genes involved. There are publications on that pathway and uh, works that are citing specifically this pathway as represented in uh, wiki pathways. Um, so it would be nice to get something similar off the ground for climate research as well. And then um, as uh, just an illustration on how the curation work uh, works in Wikidata. So here's a query that extracts n a frequent n-grams for a random set of publications, and it filters them by being uh, the, those publications being about climate change and uh, having the word impact in their title. And then if I further filter out like frequent stop words and uh, impact, climate, and change as words in the title, because that's kind of what I used as seeds, then uh, the following things pop up here. So for instance, health pops up, public health, uh, no surprise, China, United States, Australia, then there's biodiversity. Um, and so this allows a mechanism to, uh, provides a mechanism to explore uh, the data in, in there, um, even if it's not structured yet. And this helps the community to, or approaches like this, maintenance queries like this, help the community um, find new things to create or to correct or to uh, update and things like that to prioritize editing. 
Now I'll go back to the slides and uh, would like to mention that we have a page on Wikidata about Scolia, um, which provides more details about uh, the dependencies or uh, how it works or uh, some more demos and uh, references. And uh, then there is the code is up on GitHub. And then finally, I would like uh, to express my thanks, or we would like to express our thanks to the providers of open infrastructure, to the Wikidata community, to the Scolia team, and uh, also to the Alfred Sloan Foundation uh, because uh, they fund us in making the tool more robust. And we would like to thank the organizers of the workshop for inviting us to give this presentation. And uh, we would like to thank you for staying with us uh, through this talk. And now we're looking forward to the questions.